Please don't take my cameras out. They're like a thousand pound a piece. I'm, I'm, I'm not that bad. <laughs> yeah, I know, but a thousand, a thousand pound a piece, so. Wow. Yeah, I'm just doing some reviews. To go to a bay further down the. Uh... I, only if you're not comfortable. If you're, if you find, if you're right, then you're right. But I. <laughs> no. I'm... It's just yeah. <laughs> Hi guys, Jay Smith here. Look at that. New Mizuno box. Now, busy day for me because a bit later with the videos than would normally be. Um, Mark, Rick, everyone else has got standard media sets. I've opted to be a little bit later on, but be the first, absolute first, to get the custom fit one. So today we're going to be looking at the um, MP20s and um, let's get to the range and see what which video we do first. Right guys, now at the range, I've got my pitching wedge, got the seven iron, also got the five iron in the blade, MP20 blade. Now, we're gonna hit some shots out here, just with range balls, just so I can see how it feels, because it's got some copper in it. But first of all, we're just gonna pop into the, um, into the studio, just, just have a quick chat talk about how good, different, better the MP20 is to the MP18 and other ones. It's changed a lot for this year. So um, let's see how Mizuno have gone a completely different direction to how they construct these new blades and see how it works. Okay guys, in the studio now, going to have a quick chat about the MP20 blade and all the tech involved in this thing. Now it's a blade, there's not much more they can do with uh, tech. However, there's a few things that Mizuno would like us to talk about. Um, and they've made um, great efforts to try and um, list all these. So, these are the important ones grain flow forge so if you want to know what that is pop on the internet have a look basically it's their forging process now high density where they don't actually let anything squidge out the sides it's all contained when they press it into a form and so it gives them more of a denser um, more truer consistent forging um graduate taper blade now this provides more penetrating ball flight as it says and the reason how it does that if we go to the webcam view might be a touch easier there you go so if we can see there, I don't know if you can catch that, how, how thin that top line is. It is quite small and tiny. However, it's not as tiny as you think because, now if I can get this right, it's, there we go, pretty good that one there. Um, can you see actually it's quite thick. Um, that little chamfer that you see at the bottom there, that's the actual top line that you see. But you can see that it's quite thicker than it actually looks. The reason why they're doing that, let's go back to the normal view. The reason why I'm doing that is because as you um, use a lot of loft, basically the ball starts climbing up the face and your tendency to hit it is slightly higher anyway. So with all the meat at the bottom of the club, you get that classic balloon in flight that no one likes. So pros are now actually trying to hit the golf ball slightly lower on the face to keep that penetrate and more of a spinny characteristic. So what Mizuno are doing there by moving weight further up onto the top of the club, but then still making it in a way so you can't see it, is it tries to keep the center of gravity slightly higher to control uh, to control like launch and spin rate, so a bit more consistent. Uh, the copper underlay. Now there's copper, copper everywhere in this thing, all the way around the outside. The interesting part with the copper, so if I can get this one, um, let's see if I can get uh, that one and then that one so you can see, if I can transition it over. You can see there what they've done to get the copper I don't believe they can bond copper straight onto or through electrolysis onto mild steel. So what they've had to do, they've gone steel, uh, then nickel plate it, then copper, that four microns of copper in there, then nickel again, and then the chrome. So that's how they've done it, which is amazingly complicated. Um, but yeah, there we go. Uh, tool proven sole, basically, yeah, they've <laughs> chamfered it and stuff. It's a tiny sole. I mean, that's a pitching wedge. That's as big as your sole is going to get. And it's, yeah, not very big. Looks lovely. Um, satin and mirror combo finish. Now, this is actually something that I actually quite like the idea of because I love the fact that this is very, very chromey. You can see how just shiny that is. It's gorgeous. However, on the face, it's satin. So it's not 
fingers crossed, you know, it being satin, it doesn't reflect as well. The reason why you know, that's good is because when you're using a lot of loft and you're playing golf, you get that sun thing and it glares you in the face and that's no good. So um, with the satin, that'll control that. And um, yeah, you won't get, um, but it still looks gorgeous when it comes to in the bag and stuff by having it all shiny at the back. So uh, right, that's about as much as there is in the blade. Let's go see um, how it feels with that copper outside on the outdoor teaching bay. Let's go see how it feels. Okay, so we're back from chat, chat, chat. So we're gonna go hit some. Now, very quickly, we won't have to go start talking about necessarily all the bits, we've just done that. Um, but just so you guys know, I've got this in the KBS S Taper 120, new for 2019, this shaft. Uh, it looks like dollar taper, but two dollars got two lines, it's only got one, but yeah, S Taper. Um, standard length grip, new grip for this year actually. It's the tall velvet, like I normally have tall velvet, um, Golf Pride, but it's plus four. So it's a standard thickness here, but slightly thicker down there. They normally done that in just the MCC multi compound ones, but they now do it in the pure, yeah, tall velvet. Okay, two degrees upright ahead because I'm an upright player. That's enough of that. So, got some pitching wedges. I'm going to do some seven irons, I'm going to do some five irons, and then we're going to hit some proper balls with my Game Ball Vice Pro to see how it really works with proper premium balls. Hit one and see how it feels. I just caught the mic there on my arm, apologise but it's picked up on camera. That feels gorgeous. Yeah, slightly left, slightly left, what was it, six yards or so? What I've done is I've got the quad on the floor, but I've also got the simulator on the old screen. So what I'll do is I'll um, pop that on there so you can see where they've gone. But that felt lovely. Now I've hit a couple of these before, because I couldn't help it. Um, but I tell you what, mmm, I like that. Let's do another one. Oh, get left a touch. Pretty good. I'd take that all day long. First one's a little bit left, that one is pretty good. What's that one? Two, three, yeah, two and a half yards or so. That feels lovely. From a pitching wedge, now the shape of the pitching wedge, okay, with the new MP20s, the shape of the wedges when it comes to the pitching wedge and the new T20 wedges, which will be a different video, um, the whole idea is they're supposed to blend with the old MP18 and then the S18, they were slightly different shapes and they didn't quite match. But these ones supposedly match a lot better. But um, yeah, we'll have a look at that when it comes to, last one, because I like hitting this wedge. Very, very nice to hit. Oh, that's online. Get in. Yeah, okay, take that. <laughs> right. Um, Let's swap over to the seven iron because you can, uh, there's got that copper in it. It's only four microns thick, but from feel purpose, whether it's sound, it's definitely sound, but you can feel the softness. Right, let's swap over the seven quickly and let's see how that feels. Hopefully just as good as the pitching wedge. Right, so seven time. Got a seven. Now, pitching wedge is 46 degrees. Seven iron is 34. I'll get the lofts down there, you can have a look. Um, but this one proves to be properly soft. Sometimes with a wedge, because there's so much deflection in loft, you don't quite gain the absolute lovely feel that you would do if it was proper soft. But you still can feel it in the wedge. Right, anyway, let's go hit the seven iron. Seven iron, by done, but the top line looks lovely. Just that, is a, the toe's got like that, I don't know how could, it's like a perfect radius. It's not quite, because it's slightly, Expand, but it just looks, it's a great mixture of just straight lines, curves, thin top lines. Oof, I like this, looks wise anyway. Right, let's go hit this one. Come on, that's nice. Okay, I like this from Mizuno. MP18 I liked as well, the feel of the, of the blade was very, very nice. Now I was, I don't know, if it's from MP5, MP4, they went to the MP18s and that, and they went to the HD process, where they, I mean this is HD as well, so obviously when it comes to forging, stamping something, um, you've got a mold and they stamp it in, but when the HD process, they stop it squidging, so you get more of a densely, more compact grain. Um, but 
I felt when I hit it for the first time, it lost a little bit of softness. So it's nice to feel with that copper. Let's do two one more because I'm not gonna hit too many because if not, this video is gonna go on for ages. You just watch me hit um, range balls. I've leaked a touch, but I tell you what, that feels gorgeous. That's more me than anything else. Now, I'm not, I don't subscribe to the old adage when people say I swung and I didn't even feel it because I've always felt a golf ball strike. But that feels lovely. I don't know if the microphone is picking this up properly because it just sounds gorgeous. Well, I've got the five iron. <laughs> I was going to get four. However, there's a reason I'm going to do five. And when we get into the actual proper data, you'll see reasons why when it comes to custom fit and getting these blended, because that's the whole idea from uh, Mizuno for the MP20. They want all these to be able to be blended, the HMB, the MMC, and the blades. So, yeah, but um, let's flip over to the five iron. That's the borderline functional one for me. That should be fine. But uh, yeah, see how that feels. Okay, MP25 iron time. Now, and now we're starting to get up in the old clubs, longer and longer shafts, um, less numbers. My flight starts changing, I start pushing the ball a bit further forward, and then so my swing path changes slightly, my release patterns change, and I start fading them very, very slightly. However, the five iron is beautiful. What I like about these MP20s, when it comes to the MP18s, whether it's because of that little curvy bit at the bottom where it runs off at the toe, the length, the, the blade length itself, although I'm guessing if you were to go get a, a ruler, or I might have some data on it, I'll see if I can find it, I'll pop it on the screen. It doesn't look nowhere near as long as the MP18, although probably it's exactly the same size. Um, but it does look lovely. Thin top line, tiny little blade length, I like this. Right, so we're gonna be hitting some fives. This would be my longest gaming club normally before I jump into my hybrid. Now obviously hitting range ball, so it won't carry the full 183 I would normally expect, 185 possibly. Yeah, a little fade, a little brave. That's gorgeous, that. That feels wonderful. Oh, Mizuno, what have you done? <laughs> they feel lovely. They really, really do. And I'm, I'm using the blades first. So, of course, they're designed to be lovely. I mean, I've got the MMC and the HMB there as well to test, and the HMB being a bit hollow. And, anyway, you're going to get a different feel. But these feel great. Absolutely kind of little baby fade that I was looking for. But I'll tell you what, that's lovely. One more. Because I want to really go see how these work with real balls. Same shot again. It's gonna hit, is it gonna pitch in the same pitch mark? <laughs> That's gorgeous. Yeah, I like them. Right, okay, stop messing about it here. I only go and hit a load of shots with these now um, with my Game Ball Vice Pro. And I'm gonna go see how these really perform because obviously range balls, the feel of it. I mean, the chances are they perform exactly the same as an MP18. There's no difference in tech what you can do with the blade, but the feel from that copper, lovely. Right guys, numbers time, as normal. Now I've hit a load of shots. I always hit a load of shots, try to get a data set as large as I possibly can do because this thing, this blade, it's not very big, it's not very helpful. And um, as blades go, Let's go see how this actually performs when you don't quite hit the middle, because I don't hit the middle every single time, as you'll be able to see. So anyway, let's flick over to the screen. I'm going to get very little now. There we go. And this is just ball data. So you can see there from the image, that way around there, um, it disappears at the top. So basically, I've hit loads and loads and loads and loads of shots, scrolled right down to the bottom, and then captured the averages of all of them. Now, I've got loads of shots on there, as you say, more above, but on average, 97.9 .9 miles an hour ball speed. Remember, this is pitching wedge, so it's not going to go far, but ball speed wise, 98 miles an hour basically, launching at 25 degrees. Um, 
little baby tiny uh, on average it was tiny fading but it was yeah spinning up at nine one three nine you can see there a couple of times i got up to ten thousand um and drop down that's just gonna be strike i bet you if you have a look at it um descending at 50.1 so nice and healthy with nine thousand spin that's going to stop um, on average 1.9 yards uh, off target, but you can see there I do move around. There was quite a few times where I hit target near enough bang on, but, but um, yeah. Peak height of 30 and carry of 125. This is a 46 degree pitching wedge. Let's see if we can get onto the all important when it comes to the club data, because that will be, there we go, a bit more information. Average, there we go, uh, that way, 87.6 miles an hour uh, club head speed. So you can see that I do move around a little bit. Um, I am human, but just generally speaking, even if you've got the greatest face to pass in the world, if you can't swing the club um, the same speed or very similar speed every single time, you've got distance control issues straight away there. But again, we're all human beings. 6.6 um, .6 down, this is a wedge, so you're gonna hit down. 0.5 um, into out, 1.3 closed with my lie 0.7. So as I say, these are custom fit. Um, if I hadn't have got the custom fit ones and I'd gone with the media set, which is just standard everything, I wouldn't have had custom fit shafts. I wouldn't have had custom fit heads. So there you go. Um, loft, you can see all the different lofts. I mean, I, I move around very, very slightly, it's not too bad. But look at the strikes. The strike's the interesting thing. I, I mean, I move around quite a bit. You've got between you've got seven mil toe, eight mil toe, 10 mil toe in there, and then they raised eight mil heel. But look at the lowness. Now, generally speaking, when it comes to wedge, I do gravitate down towards the lower part of strike. I can't help it, but I do want to sort of like hit the bottom groove because I do get that lower spinnier flight. Um, but yeah, one mil toe, seven mil low on average. You can see as a groove and a half low, I try and get that more zippier lower flighted but um i mean uh, yeah that is as pitching wedges go that is absolutely fine right now time to go with the seven iron right ball data time here we go um I'll jumps up now to 117 now this is remember this is a 34 degree loft this is very true lofted uh irons uh blades 19 degrees 18.8 of launch you can see a move around there slightly on strike um and that was a little i mean that's they're so dead shape there's no real draw on that whatsoever spinning up at six six so that's quite remember we're not being true lofted it's going to hopefully spin well um now you can see i move around slightly there when my strike when it comes to spin you can see that's just purely me um but on average six six for me i'm not the greatest spinner of everybody so i am very encouraged when i see a seven iron spinning at a six six i'm normally around the six thousand bracket so that's quite healthy um looking at 48.7 uh, degrees descent angle we're going to go into the five next and i'll we'll understand what i mean when it comes to descent angle that is what i use so i can see how controllable the most uh, or the longest iron or the least lofted iron is going to be in my set. So 48.7, that's well past 45, that's no worries. Bang on line on average, you can see that I do move around on there a little bit. 33 peak height and 158 in carry distance. So let's go over to the all important club data so you can see. Um, again, look at the strike size. We'll, we'll get that in a minute. So 91.3 miles an hour on average, um, 4.6 down less down obviously with the seven iron um two into out 1.8 close little baby draws so 0.7 toe down on my light again custom fit but you can see there on the odd occasion i do move around a little bit we are humans all uh, after all 26.7 degrees at dynamic loft and look at the strike eight mil toe zero mil low i'm hitting it off the toe and it's a blade and you can see there are quite a few times there how toey I do get. But if you go back uh, to ball data again and just sort of see how my distances change around a little bit. I mean, I go 154, I, I pop up to 163. So, I mean, that's nine yards worth of carry distances. And the strike, they're not all buttoned. I am very, very encouraged, exceptionally encouraged, just how well this thing does, considering it is just a blade. Um, I cannot see any reason why someone who's not quite proficient at strike, they do, you don't have to be an absolute striker to play one of these. So yeah, I'm very, very encouraged. Um, then should we go into the five iron? Let's go into the five iron. Right, now into five iron. Let's go into five iron time. So. 
<laughs> ball speed now is 127.6 now up to you know, 128 you can see the ball speed starting to climb 15.9 loft like launch angle starting to go down um with um what was it a little 1.1 to the left with little cuts so again that's me i normally play a little cut with my five iron generally speaking um uh, four so that's four nine spin again very very encouraging i'm normally for a five iron i'm normally spinning around about the four mark and now that's spinning up nearly at the, at the five and yeah and 45.7 degrees descent angle so when it comes to descent angle, the reason why I've got the blade in the 5.7 pitching ridge is because going forward, I'm going to be doing a um, some form of custom fit video where I'm going to show you necessarily when it comes to blending these sets, what's the best way to blend them. And necessarily, I mean, obviously different pros will have different ideas and different fitters will have different ideas around fitting, but I'm a firm believer, believer of the 45 degree descent angle. So if you're coming into any green with a 45 degree descent angle, you can control it through descent angle and don't have to worry about it bouncing through. Um, so you can see there 45.7 degrees. That is just at the point of where I feel that I can control it going into the green. You can see there a couple of times I move up and down, but generally speaking, it's bang on there. So if I went to a four iron in the blade, we're launching slightly lower, not quite going up as high. Peak height is what, 33? You can see on average, you can see there's a couple of times I move up and down. But I wouldn't be able to control a four iron blade as it goes in because it will just come in a little bit shallower. Um, what's the old distance there? 188 on average. And you can see there's, I mean, that's very, very encouraging. I mean, again, this blade is that good. I am exceptionally surprised by the performance of the blade because this. Uh, this is the interesting bit. We've got to pop into um, the club data. So 97 miles an hour on average, uh, 3.4 down, less down even more, 0.2 into and out, one, one close, 1.5 toe down for some reason. I was just wanting to toe down this one today. Um, look, five mil toe, two mil low, but that's not, the, that's not the important bit. Look at the strikes. Now, this is a blade and look how a lot of the time I was not hitting zero zero. I was hitting all over. I mean, three mil toe, seven mil high, seven mil heel, three mil low, four mil, six mil, 11 mil, eight mil, 12 mil toe. And then it goes, so you can see that on 30 mil toe, I'm not hitting middle. And the good thing is with that is it just shows you how forgiving, if you want to say forgiveness, how forgiving this blade is. And when you look at necessarily um, all those strike differences, and then looking at the distance differences, I go from, what was my longest one? 193, abs 194, absolutely ripped. Um, and I dropped down to 178 on a really, really poor shot. Now that is from a blade and I'm miss hitting it like that. Um, I am exceptionally, exceptionally impressed. If you look at the vast majority of shots there, I am in and around that number. It's only I'm dropping to 178 once when I hit a, by a, just a poor shot. I am amazed how good this is. Conclusion, does it work? Very much so. It works brilliantly well. Um, I, I cannot fault the blade, the MP20 blade at all. The feeling is great. The look of it is lovely. And performance wise, I am I am gobsmacked how well this blade performs considering I'm not hitting middle. And if you guys want to have a chat about forgiveness, what is forgiveness and how forgiving certain clubs are, I tell you what, I am amazed just how good this thing is so anyway hope you liked the video if you did click that little like button comment below down there with what you'd like to say about the mp20 how what other videos you like it being compared to up to um different uh, clubs or is it is it a relevant club for you has this video with all its strike data and bits and pieces give you an idea of if you could play a blade or not is it worth trying so if you did yeah also subscribe little button down there little red button subscribe it's free and also a little bell icon. Click that, you'll get notified next time I upload some content, which will be soon, because I've got to do the MMC. So Blade first, MMC, then HMB. So thanks guys for watching, and we'll see you again soon.